Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 8H, where we're going to continue our discussion of the physical locations of genes on chromosomes, focusing more on the bigger picture of physical maps and especially genetic linkage maps. We'll talk about what recombination frequency tells us um, about linkage groups and linkage maps, map distances, and about the differences between genetic linkage and physical or covalent linkage. So first, what does recombination frequency tell us about gene position? Well, it tells us absolutely nothing about the absolute gene position, which gene is on which chromosome. But it tells us a very accurate measure of relative gene positions, how close genes are to each other, and whether they're on the same chromosome or different chromosomes. So the first thing that recombination frequency tells us is that it defines what we call linkage groups. Those are groups of genes that are linked to each other. They're on the same chromosome. So here we've identified two linkage groups. So here we've used recombination to sort the genes into two different linkage groups. Um, within each linking, linkage group, the genes are all on the same chromosome. They may be directly genetically linked to each other or indirectly linked. We'll come back to this at the end of the lecture, this distinction. Once genes have been mapped to a linkage group that tells us these genes are all on the same chromosome, we can compare the recombination frequencies between them to estimate their distant relative distances apart and we can then use that information to construct a genetic map of the chromosome. Even though we don't know what chromosome it is, we know the relative positions of the genes on that chromosome by their recombination frequencies. Now I should say that in the previous lecture, we mapped the re relative recombination. We map, used the recombination frequency of two genes to measure the distance between them. But in order to position genes on a chromosome relative to more than two genes, it's necessary to do what are called three-factor crosses so that you can tell which gene is in the middle of two genes and you can get them all in the right order. Mapping genes by three-factor crosses has been a mainstay of classical genetics, both in the laboratory and in genetics problem sets in textbooks. But it's now becoming uncommon in genetics research as DNA sequencing and bioinformatics analysis becomes much cheaper and more powerful. Because of that, we're not going to cover three-factor crosses in this course, but you probably will encounter this technique in any genetics textbook that you read. Now, a word about physical maps and genetic maps. As we mentioned in Module 7, physical map, here for chromosome 9 of maize, is constructed from the DNA sequence. So it's a description of the physical structure, the DNA sequence of the DNA. The genetic map is an indirect measure that was inferred from recombination frequencies. Now, for physical maps, the units are base pairs, or more usually when you're talking about whole chromosomes, mega base pairs, 10 to the 6 base pairs. For genetic maps, you've already used um, in lecture, six, lecture 8G, you've used the unit called a map unit. It's defined as the distance between genes for which 1% of the products are recombinant. So if the recombination frequency is 1%, the distance is one map unit. Centimorgan is just another name, a name that was originally developed to commemorate one of the outstanding original geneticists at the beginning of the 20th century, Thomas Hunt Morgan. Mo because most chromosomes have at least one crossover, most chromosomes are at least 100 map units long. So, for example, chromosome X is 180 map units long. 
But again, these map units are relative measures of how frequently recombination happens along the chromosome. Um, and the relationship between the genetic measure, map units, and the physical measure, base pairs or kilobase pairs or megabase pairs, depends on details about how long the chromosome is. Longer chromosomes have more crossovers and on local variations in the probability of crossovers at different places in the chromosome. Now, there's one more important point to make, and that's the distinction between genetic linkage and physical linkage. So when we say two genes are physically linked, we mean they are part of the same DNA molecule. They're joined by the covalent bonds of the DNA backbone. When we say genes are genetically linked, we mean that they're close enough together that they don't segregate randomly at meiosis, that the frequencies of the different combinations of alleles are not equal in the gametes. But because chromosomes typically have at least one crossover across along their length, it's very often the case that genes near the ends of the chromosome, even though they're physically linked, they're part of the same DNA molecule, there are enough crossovers between them that they are not genetically linked. This doesn't mean they're not part of the same linkage group because they are linked to the same gene. So th although this gene does not appear linked to this gene in a cross where just those two markers are considered, but if other markers are considered as well, it's found that this gene is linked, for instance, to that gene and that gene, this gene is linked to that gene and that gene. These three genes are linked to each other so that all of these genes are considered part of the same linkage group. Even though they're not all directly genetically linked to each other, they're indirectly genetically linked by their linkage to closer genes. So here's a couple of problems about linkage and linkage groups. Which of these statements are true? Two of them are true. Um, two genes can be physically linked, but not directly genetically linked. That's what you saw in the previous slide. If the genes are at the ends of the chromosome, they will not appear to be genetically linked directly. But they will have a physical linkage and an indirect genetic linkage. All genetically linked genes are physically linked. So the genetically linked genes are a subset of the physically linked genes on a chromosome. Most of the physically linked genes are also genetically linked, but not the ones at the far ends from each other. And here's the second problem. This is more of a genetics type problem. Um, you're told that you've done what you should recognize as a test cross. You have a doubly heterozygote strain that you're interested in, and you have a homozygous recessive strain. And you find that 50% of the offspring have recombinant genotypes from this parent, and 50% got parental genotypes from this parent. What can you conclude? And the answer is you can't conclude much for sure, even though probably if these genes were picked at random and you have no other information about them, they're probably not on the same chromosome. It's certainly possible that they're still on the same chromosome, but just far enough apart that there's always at least one crossover between them so that they behave genetically as if they're unlinked. So what we've done, we talked about genetic and physical map units. We talked about map lengths. We talked about the concept of linkage groups and about genetic linkage and physical linkage, how not all physically linked genes will behave as if they are directly genetically linked, but they will be indirectly linked into a linkage group because 
even though they're far apart from each other, they will show genetic linkage to loci that are closer to them, but still close enough to each other to be detected as linked. Coming up next, Lecture 8i, we're going to change gears and start using crosses to investigate gene functions. I hope to see you there.